This is Bob Andelman, and you're listening to and hopefully watching the Mr. Media interview with saxophonist Mindy Abair. And a funny thing happened while we took our break. Uh, Mindy, you got an interesting phone call, I understand. Yeah, it was kind of fun. You know, you said, oh, okay, I'm going to, you know, get you right back. So I got a call from American Idol. Uh, and so basically they're putting together, I guess, some arrangements. They wanted to make sure of exactly what I played, the instrumentation and different doubles. You know, as a saxophone player, you're kind of expected to double on a few instruments you know I've played tenor before but I'm mostly an alto and soprano player play a little bit of flute uh, so I uh, gave them that knowledge to arrange with so he basically just got off the phone and said okay I'll call you next week very cool so you will be back apparently maybe I mean it would seem that way hmm. but uh, there was no confirmation that you will definitely be on but there was the yeah what exactly do you play so we could arrange it so nice 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 That's yeah cool. very much so uh, I, I was going to ask you when we came back from the break anyway what impact can appearing on American Idol have on your career is it too soon to know or do you have an idea already well I mean it's very interesting it, as someone who's made you know a career in the jazz world it's a microcosm I mean probably 2% of the population buys jazz records, you know. Um, none of us got into jazz to make a million dollars. None of us got in thinking it was going to buy us big houses or any of that. I, I can say I just loved to play, and uh, I wasn't great at anything else. <laughs> and so I went into something I loved, Um so it's interesting, I'm used to being in front of an audience that's, you know, the jazz audience, and they're huge fans of mine, but apart from that, you know, a lot of people don't know my face or my music or what I do, and, uh, and that's cool, you know, I don't expect that. Um, being on American Idol, that kind of changes things. Yeah. So all of a sudden, people who you know, had never listened to a jazz record in their life or never thought of going to a jazz concert, you know, they all of a sudden knew my face or my name or, you know, and that's, that's a crazy thing. It's been, it's been really fun. Um, kind of surprising, you know, I'll go into a room and someone will say, Hey, you're the girl from American Idol. I saw you. Oh my goodness. That was so cool. And, you know, that doesn't happen a lot outside of like I said, my little microcosm. Mm -hmm. So uh, pretty cool. I, I like it. And who knows, you know, what it means for my career as a whole, as you asked. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, but uh, I know that my phone blew up every time. <laughs> every time I went on American Idol, my texts were just like, boom, 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 you know. And uh, my website crashed. Wow. After, after 75,000 hits that day, it just completely went down my web guy had to call the company and say okay you got to put the the bar up higher cuz we're going to have a lot of hits mm -hmm. in the coming months so um you know it's been kind of getting used to stuff like that um and i love that so who knows what will happen uh, has your manager been able to take advantage of that i mean is he he or she getting calls uh, for bookings and yeah, I had, I had dinner with my agent the other night, and he goes, oh, yeah, I've gotten some calls for you to do, you know, this or this or this. It kind of opens the door to different things, whereas, you know, the usual calls they're getting are, you know, can she play at this winery or this jazz festival, you know, right. it's, it's a little bit different thing. So, yeah, the press opportunities and, and kind of opportunities for different music festivals and, and different things are kind of opening up and, and uh yeah, definitely taking advantage of that. I think any time as an instrumentalist and, wow, get even kind of lower on the food chain, women, you know, <laughs> a woman instrumentalist, uh, that you get that kind of opportunity. You definitely want to make the most of it. So well, we'll see what uh, goes on in my future. But, yeah, I think it can only be a really, really positive thing for me. Cool. And... It was really fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. I'm very, I'm very glad to hear that. And, and I know uh, the, the uh, your your friends back at Northeast Christian High School, 
Christian. Northside Christian. Northside, uh, Northside Christian. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sure that they are very proud of you, indeed. Um, but I wanted, that, and I, I, I wanted to back up a little bit. What causes a young girl to pick up the saxophone of all instruments? Um, my dad played sax, oh. and you know, some kids have a dad who's a firefighter, or a mom who's a nurse, and they want to you know, copy what their parents did. Um, I grew up on the road with my dad's band. My dad had a, a band out of the Tampa Bay area called the Entertainers. And they just toured, just toured everywhere in the U.S. And so I was born basically on the road and grew up on the road. And, um, you know, for the first probably four years of my life, uh, we were just traveling. So we kind of moved back to our home base of St. Pete after that, after the band broke up. But, you know, I started school and they put a bunch of instruments out and I just thought, wow, dad always looked like he was having a blast <laughs> playing sax. You know, I was eight years old. You don't think deeper than that when right. you're eight. You just think, wow, dad always looks like he's having a good time. It's cool. It's a loud instrument. I could be the loudest person in the band. That's true. I could rock out on that thing. I'm going to play that. So uh, that's how I chose sax, and he never gave me lessons. I mean, my grandmother was an opera singer, and she taught piano, she taught vocals, and, you know, I had all these musical people in my life. They didn't necessarily give me lessons, but I think osmosis, you know, and just being around them and, you know, listening and, and learning from them was, was a huge part of me becoming who I am. Now, I'm thinking uh, the saxophone, that takes some serious uh, lungs, really, I mean, to, you know, to wail on that like you do. I, you must have taken lessons, formal lessons at some point, right? No? I had probably between the time I started sax when I was eight and college, I probably had a handful of lessons. Hmm. So not that many. My dad would bring me down to the local music store, bring music. Bring you, and, bring uh, bring and, you know, I'd go down and take a sax lesson. There was a guy named Bill Evans there. Um, and I, I probably took a handful of lessons from him. And he was amazing. Mm. You know, he, he didn't just teach you scales and arpeggios. He would make you swing the scale. And when you s swung it the right way, he'd dance around the room. So <laughs> it was, he was a good inspiration. He was a, a swing band leader. So. Oh, nice kind of taught me early on it's all about style it's not just about your your technique it's about how you play it's about the the shape you make from it so um yeah it really wasn't until college that I had you know formal training that I'd go in for a weekly lesson and I gotta say that's that's a huge thing I always tell kids go in for lessons mm. go go in you'll you'll just get so much better so much faster I had that on piano. I would go in for a weekly lesson, and I took piano for a lot of years. Oh, okay. On sax, I was kind of renegade on my own. So you you must read music then, having taken piano all those years. Oh yeah, oh, and okay. I have a degree in woodwind performance from Berklee College of Music in Boston. Uh, so. I, you know, I completely forgot about that part. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, you you've had the formal music training, obviously. I'm legit now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 well, and you know, I wanted to ask you so. Yeah, and you made reference to you know how uh, rare it is female uh, playing saxophone, you know. But uh, and and male musicians, um, they're generally uh, known for being uh, as sexist as uh, about women playing in bands or in the industry in general as uh, male uh, comedians are about women in in doing what they do. Um, how did you overcome that? When did you overcome that, or have you overcome that? I guess. You know, I've never really carried that chip on my shoulder. Um, I kind of ignored any of it. I, I've always felt that we're beyond that. Um, I feel that if you're excellent at what you do, it really doesn't matter whether you're a woman or a man, black, white, anything. Uh, but you have to prove yourself because as as a woman... Um, it's you're considered to be not as good as you know of a musician. I think people are used to seeing male sax players, and you know, oh, I bet that guy's good. Mm. He looks like Clarence Clements. <laughs> I bet he's good. You know, whereas if I walk in the room, they're like, oh, 
uh, she was probably a cheerleader in high school. <laughs> You know, so they don't expect you to play saxophone or rock their world in any way on the saxophone. So I've always felt that if I go in and I do my thing and I play, I'll win someone over. Hmm. So uh, I, I always looked at it as more a quest. I remember my mom and dad came to a concert um, at one point and they were sitting in the audience. And uh, I came out kind of halfway through a song that the guitar player was playing. And uh, when I walked out on stage... The girl sitting next to my mother in the audience was in a big theater. She, uh, she said, what is that skinny little white girl doing on? <laughs> okay. And you know, my mom kind of shrunk down. like. Mm. <laughs> so I played. I did my thing and, you know, played. We finished the song. And it was that girl at the end of the song who was the first on her feet. Mm. And she got up on her feet. And she starts clapping. She goes, you go, you skinny little white girl. You go. I love you, man. You go, girl. And my mom was like, thank God. Wow. You know. So I think as a woman, you have to prove yourself. But whatever you do, if you go out and, and do it well, I think you can gain anyone's respect. 